with me all today and ask you to share it. Bring my heart with you guys. And, uh, and I'm crying, sorry, I'm so sorry. Uh, in worship, God just touched me. Um, and he gave me a really cool message. It is so in line with the soul. And uh, in this song, we say, an army is rising up. And we say, and, and God is calling an army. He's calling uh, a new generation that's going to be unlike any other generation that has walked this earth. A generation that's going to walk in a place so like Jesus that the earth is going to, just going to rock with His glory. And I'm not just telling you to make you feel good. I'm telling you because God is really calling us into a place of radical consecration for Him. He's calling us both into a place of obedience to His Word and also a place of walking in His Spirit and with His Spirit. Because Jesus was, he was both obedient to the word of his father and he, was, he proclaimed it everywhere, but he also walked in power. He also walked in a place of love, not a place of judgment. He walked in a place where grace, he pulled out the treasure out of people. He didn't point out the trash, he, he pulled out the treasure, he showed them who they were. And, and from that place, they were like, I want to follow him. That's what he did. And, and today, I want to tell you a few cool stories because God, um, He actually changed my life. Um, he gave me a dream and He did a lot of amazing things and He, he just changed my life. And he showed me that he's, he's calling this generation literally to, to walk in a place like never before. Because the time is, the, the time is, we don't have time to, to be lukewarm anymore. We don't have time to play it anymore. Because God is really calling us to be a representation of what Jesus looked like to prepare the world, to prepare the way for the coming King, to prepare the way for Jesus. So I want to start. I just want to tell you um, a cool story. Uh, so, so I really I was in the Word. This was last year, April. This happened, or a bit, a bit before then. I was really in the Word. I, I'm, a, I'm a Christian. I'm a normal Christian. I still am. And, and I, I was going to church, and I was getting in the Word, I was being obedient to the Word, trying my best to follow His ways. And, uh, but there was something missing, because I didn't know, the Word says, love your neighbor as yourself, He says. But now, I, I, how can I do that? I can't even love my brother or, or my sister the way I'm supposed to. How can I even love like anyone who I encounter in my daily walk, you know? And uh, I was like, Lord, I went in front of him on my face and I said, Lord, I can't, I can't do this. How can I do this? And, and what happened is, uh, absolutely, uh, you need to understand first, I had an intense desire in my heart, which I brought before my father. This didn't fall on my lap, I'm about to tell you, because we need to seek and pursue this. We also think, we always think, oh, it's prophets, or people, or God calls you, or you have to get a dream, or you have to. It's not about that. God is calling, calling every single one of you sitting here, and the, the, the size of your calling is going to depend on your level of obedience. Okay? So, the more obedient you are to the call of God, the higher He's going to rise you, the more He's going to use you, the more you're going to receive to give. The more love you're going to receive to give. Okay, so I want to tell you, so in April I got a dream. In this dream, I was um, in the streets of Israel. So Israel, if you don't know, that's what the whole Bible is, about part of Israel. This is this country. And I was in the streets of Israel, modern day Israel, and there's this little 10 year old boy in front of me and uh, in front of him is a 10 year old girl as well and I'm telling this boy put your hand on her shoulder and you need to know I've never prayed for anyone before at that time in my life like before in terms of strangers or anything like that so anyway I get this dream and I'm, I'm telling this, this this boy okay put your hand on her shoulder say this pray this and he prays that there's something wrong with her shoulder and what happens is uh, he says amen and she's like whoa and, and she freaks out because all the pain leaves her shoulder she turns around she runs to her mother jewish mother she who doesn't believe in jesus and i tell her mother this is jesus he loves you this is why he did this for you okay this was just a dream so i wake up and i'm like okay that's weird just another dream we get a lot of those things and the next uh, that week there's a sunday that week i fasted i had a feeling in my heart that this was from god and I fasted and I prayed that week. Okay, you know that. We're going to have to touch on that later again. I fasted and I prayed that week. And uh, that Saturday, God changed my life. 
in one day. What happened was I was I'm in Pretoria, I had fuel, I lived there. And uh, I was sitting at home at night and I was alone, just relaxing, chilling out, and this thought comes. This is just a thought. It wasn't God like PDO, I need you to do this. It was a thought. And it came and it said, go to Hatfield Square, there's someone you need to meet. It's just a thought. I'm like, why am I thinking this? This is so weird and out of nowhere, you know? And and I get this thought that just keeps coming and I'm like, no, I don't want to leave me alone. I'm like, why should I so so And um, uh, and, and in the end, I'm like, fine, you know what, I'm going to go get takeaways. And I just make an excuse to go. And I go there, and, um, and I get out of my car in Hatfield Square, and, and there's uh, this guy who walks up to me, he's my car guy. He walks up to me, he's like, oh, he starts talking to me, he starts telling me a story, and so on. And I'm like, dude, what's going on off your shoulder? And when I said, I was like, what am I saying? This is so weird. And he's like, oh, I have pain on my shoulder, why? And I said, dude, Jesus is going to heal your shoulder right now. And, and, he was, and I was like, why did I just say? You know, because I've never prayed for like, someone like that before in my life. And, and I was like, well, I took my mouth, I talked too far, I was not to pray for this guy. So I'm like, okay, Lord, well, thank you, speak to your shoulder in the name of Jesus. And we come all this pain to leave right now. Lord, I thank you. And, and what happened when I said, man, I don't want to just walk away, I want to ask him what's going on. And, and he's like, and he couldn't lift his shoulder, he couldn't do that. And he's like, so he was like, listen, you have pain. And then after I prayed, he was like, no way. And he freaks out, like freaks out so much. And, and what happens is he's like, dude, I can't, well, how did you do this? He says, are you doing like magic or something? Oh like, no, this is not magic, man. This is just Jesus, he loves you. And he turns around, he runs, and he brings his friend, his friend has got a foot problem. And um, I'm like, okay, I don't know what's going on, I'll just pray again. And Lord, I thank you, come on, the pain to leave his foot right now. I'm tested out, he tested out, he's like, no way. And he freaks out completely. And both of the, what happened, when this ends up happening, there's people start coming because there's something going on. People start coming with pain. And by the end of that night, over 25 people came, and every single one of them freaked out and got healed. And I was like, what is going on? Uh, there were people, there was a guy who came to me with a backache, and um, he's had, he's, he came to me and actually said, he thinks a tuberculosis is causing this. I was like, that's weird, okay, whatever. <laughs> and, um, and I'm just like, Lord, I thank you. He speaks to the back, all pain, get up. And um, I put, guys, I promise you this, you're not going to believe me, but, but I, well, I was putting my hand on his spine, and when I said, hey, amen, he had a fright like this, and I felt his spine like a crack. I don't know how to explain it, but just something moved, and like he went down, and all the pain left him. Okay, now, guys, from that day, my life obviously changed, because now when I go to KFC, I'm not just going to get KFC. I'm there to give love to them. I'm there to imitate Christ. I'm there to to show them who God is and show them that He loves them. So I'm going to tell you about some of these as well, actually. Um, this was like two weeks ago or something. Um, but this happens almost every time I go to KFC now. Um, I mean, I was I was at KFC in my in the drive-through, right? And, and I'm on my car. And I'm just okay. I'm placing my order and so on. And um, See, I made it a point that every time I buy from someone, I pray for them. No matter who or what. No matter. I ask them, can I pray for you? You know, more than not, they say, sure, because everyone needs prayer. No matter who, I need prayer. Everyone needs prayer. So, what ended up happening is I'm with this, this woman, and I'm asking her, get anything I can pray for. I'm not talking about physical things, not necessary. I'm talking about anything. But she says, no, she's got pain in her, um, she always has pain in her leg or something. Like, uh, she can barely, yeah. And I'm like, okay, but she said, she doesn't want me to pray now because she's busy, but can I come in and pray for her? I'm like, cool, I drove to the next window where I get my food, asked the same question. There's two guys that asked them, do you have any pain in your body or anything I can pray for? The one guy's just like, I'm just tired, man, because it's like been late and, and I just feel so drained. I need, like, God to just help me. And the other one sees he's got pain in his back. And I'm sitting in my car, not touching him. You don't need to touch people, but you can as well, whatever. But I'm sitting in my car, and I'm just like, Lord, I thank you, come Holy Spirit, and just fill this place, this KFC right now. Lord, I pray that your presence will just be there. God, we speak to his back, be my whole. And Lord, I just pray for energy for, for, for my other friend, Lord. 
said that man immediately the one guy said, dude, I feel this thing came over me and it was Holy Spirit. Because God is present, it has a presence. You don't always need to feel God, right? It, it's not about if I don't feel God, He's not there. But there is a presence attached, especially when we pray for people. And he's like, I pray for, I felt this thing over me and I just feel so like energetic right now. I don't know what this is weird. What did you do? And the other one is like, no, I got my pain just left me in my back. And he freaks out. I, I tell them Jesus loves them. I tell them why this happened to them. I draw. I, I, I walk in for the, for the woman who, who said I should come in for her. I call her forward. She comes forward. And uh, there's you understand, there's a huge queue in this KFC now. And I'm calling her forward, and she's coming forward, and she's kind of beside the queue with me now. We're sitting at one of the uh, tables. And um, I'm just like, okay, let's, let's just pray for her because she can. She she's walking like she's like really struggling to walk. And um, so what happened was that just like she said it was like, and she's she's not a believer. Okay, she is not. She doesn't. She's not a Christian. But she she. I told her that my God can heal her. And she, so I, she's like, okay. And she's kind of out of a place of interest. She's like, sure, okay. Kind of almost challenging way, but that's cool because my God. He, he always comes through with challenge. So what happened is, pray for her, for her and uh, no difference. Pray for her, come on, pain in her knee to leave, no difference. And she's like, oh, okay, thank you, you know. And I'm like, hey, listen, can I just pray for you again? Because it doesn't always come. Most of the time, it doesn't go the first time. I'm just like, Lord, thank you, we speak to this leg. And I understand all these people in this queue are looking at it, because this is weird. You don't see this every day at the KFC. Really, you don't. <laughs> and um, I was just like praying for her. And prayed twice, prayed three times, prayed four times, and the fourth time she says, I think this is a miracle. I said, Why? She says, I don't know, I feel no pain. She stands up, she walks perfectly. And all of those people, almost as many as you sitting here, see this happen. What do you think went through their minds in that moment? Now, what I want to say is immediately some of you are going to think, Oh, but you're special, or, or you're a prophet, or I don't know what. Guys, that is more walk of Christianity. That's what more, the normal walk of a Christian. Because see, we, we compare ourselves to our friends and we say, oh, well, look at me, look at them, I'm, I'm okay. You're like, I, I, I don't have that, they sin a lot more than me, or whatever. But see, the standard is not our friends or fellow Christians, the standard is Christ. And his disciples followed him, they walked in it as well. Okay, I'm going to read the scripture to you quickly. Um, uh, this is in Mark 16, verse 17 to 18. If you'd like to open, you can open up. Okay. I'm just going to read a short verse. And these signs will accompany those who believe. Note, those who believe. Wait, do you believe? Yes, that's where we're sitting here. Okay, so, and these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up serpents in their hands, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. Why is he saying this? He's saying because in the, in the walk of a believer, you're going to encounter persecution, you're going to encounter bad things that's going to try, that's going to happen to you. But he's, he's making a, a promise. He says, even if you drink deadly poison, if someone poisons you because they, they, they want to stop what you're doing, if you're walking for Christ, it's not going to hurt you. Further, he says, um, okay, he says, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay, lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. And this is not a promise for a prophet or a pastor. This is for believers. That's exciting. That's amazing. Because that means that if you're sitting here, that is a promise for you. But the, now the question is, why aren't we walking in that? Most of us were not. I mean, most of Christianity is walking in. And see, I want to submit to you that the enemy has came with a thing. It's called fear. The word, the word says, fear is not of me. So if, if fear is not of God, then where is it from? It's, if it's not from God, it's from, it's from the enemy, right? So now what we do is we've got an issue where if we're in the KFC and we want to pray for someone, I'm sure all of you have a desire to pray for people, but the issue comes is we have fear. We're afraid. So, and, and, and the thing is, Jesus didn't just say in the Word, you'll never read, give your heart to me. He never said that. I, I'm, I'm totally for proclaiming I'm, I'm a Christian. 
But he said, pick up your cross and follow me. Why did he say that? He said that because it's not just about going to church, which I love, I go to church. It's awesome, we should go to church. But it's not just about that. It's about walking out Jesus outside of the walls of a church too. Okay. So, fear is not of me, he said. God said. Now, that means that we need to, how do we get rid of fear? Fear is because we're afraid of people. That's why. I'm afraid of this one person. I think of me, I'm afraid of this or that. But God is saying, I want you to pick up your cross, follow me, and live a life sacrificed, your, a life not your own anymore. So what he's saying is, he's not saying you're not allowed to get a job or do all those things. He's saying is that it's not about your kingdom anymore. Now it is about his kingdom. It's not about what this person thinks of you anymore. It's not about what this or this or this. You're going to be persecuted if you follow the truth. It's a promise, even from believers. Anyone is going to persecute People are going to persecute you because. So he's saying, be selfless, not selfish. He's saying, pick up your cross, follow me. What did Jesus do after he picked up his cross? He sacrificed himself for us. So now he did that so that we can enter that place of sacrifice. Okay? He didn't just do it so we can he didn't just do it so we can play a Christian or be lukewarm. I know this is a hard word, but he didn't just he said, listen, it's all or nothing for this thing. I'm gonna be honest, God is God is tired of lukewarm Christians. He is he's he's, he's calling a generation and I'm not saying that we need to work for our salvation. This is not what this is about at all. We're saved by grace. We're saved by believing in Christ. But we're, James it says, faith without works is dead. So what he's saying, he's not saying you have to work for salvation. He's saying that if you have true faith in the finished work of the cross, works will follow. Works will be the evidence of that faith. Okay. Uh, I want to read another scripture to you. It's a really cool one. Just, I just love the word. The word is, if you don't get it, the word, you're going to starve. Okay, I'm, I'm going to read Romans 8, verse 8 to you. For I consider, sorry, if you want to turn, sorry, I'm going to fast. Romans 8, verse 8 to you. Okay, so, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits the eager longing, with, with eager longing, for the revealing of the sons of God. So he's saying his creation is growing, creation is waiting for the sons of God to be made manifest. He's, so it's, and then he also says, for, the, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory. So. He's saying that you are going to be, you are going to suffer for him. You are going to suffer if you're a Christian. If you walk it out 100%, not compensating for people, not compensating to, not sugarcoating, then you are going to be persecuted. You are going to suffer. But can I just tell you, it is so worth it. It is so worth suffering for my king. And he says, the glory that is to be revealed is nothing in comparison with the suffering that we're going to endure right now, walk on this earth. Okay, so. So, so guys, I want to ask you, are you willing to pick up your cross? Are you willing to take a step and not just do this thing halfway? Because we've got too many Christians doing this thing halfway. And God is calling us to do this all the way. Because if we do that, people, atheists, man, I've seen atheists, like, be rocked with God's love. Because I wasn't afraid of just sharing with them. And it's not just about having them healed. That's going to come. But if you just open your heart and just be like, listen, God did this thing for me, He can do the same for you. It's a promise. If He healed you of something, if He brought you out of a sin, He can do the same thing for anyone else, and He wants to do that as well. Okay, um, I want to talk about value and, and who we are. Because I, I know, especially at school, like, I didn't really, I had a struggle to understand who I am. Yeah, who we are in Christ especially. And I want to talk about your value. You are royalty. 
You are sons and daughters of the living God, the creator of the universe, the one who sent his only begotten one to name God's son to die for you. Now, this is, if, if the value of something is determined by what you're willing to pay for it, right? We, when we go to shop, what we're willing to pay for it, that's the value of it. So if the value of something is determined by what you're willing to pay for it, and God gave his only son for you, then you must be pretty valuable. <laughs> right? So, you are so, so valuable. And do not think, do not think that, oh, but look at all these other people. I mean, you know, it's not just about God. If, if, only, if God could, if, 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 if we painted the scenario where it was only about you, then God would do the same thing for one person as well, for one of you as well. I want to paint a picture, I know I feel that some of you feel you're not valuable. And I want to paint a picture for you today. It's, it's a weird story now, but just hang with me, okay? Um, we're going to go to Conception. Yeah, we're going to go there. <laughs> um, in, the, in, in Conception, you've got all these sperm, sperm swimming up the birth canal. Millions and millions, I don't know how many, maybe somebody can help me, but a lot of them, okay? And they're swimming up, and they're, they're, they've got one goal. They need to get in this egg. That's their only mission in life. And they're short. Thing. They need to go get into this egg. So now they're swimming. They've got they've got like drills and all these things, and they're and they're, and they're trying. They're coming to the egg. They're drilling into the egg, and they're pushing each other out of the way because there's only one who's going to make it, right? And now I want to paint a picture. Now listen. Imagine this. All of them are trying to get it. And suddenly here you, okay, here you come, you're way back, the way end of the line, the way least of the least back. And you're coming and you're like swimming, you're slow, you can't swim fast. And suddenly, they part like the Red Sea. And here you come and you're swimming by them, and they're against the walls. And you hop into the egg and you say, sorry guys, I was predestined to be here before the foundation of this earth was laid. And, and all these people are like, no, 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 but God predestined for you to be here, to be alive. You're not an accident. He predestined for you to be here alive before the foundation of this earth was laid. Because He thought of you before anything was created. God, that's incredible. So and now it's not just that He's calling you now to take up that birthright. See, He, he, he didn't just die for us to go to heaven, which is awesome. I, I want to go to heaven. We all want to go to heaven. But he died to give heaven inside of us on this earth right now. Okay. So, I don't know who of you heard of Passion, but it was a, it's a band and things that came to it where they were there. And they had a great show and there was like, I don't know how many, 88,000 or something people there worshipping the king. And it was amazing. And I was there as well. And, uh, but something happened afterwards, which I want to share with you. Is in of the stadium was the stadium where it was held, and uh, when people started leaving, it was this, it, you know, when there's so many people in one place, it's crazy, it's just chaos. And we were leaving, we were going out the gates, and we were walking on the street, and there's hundreds of people walking down the street, going down to the cars, whatever. And me and my friends were walking, and there's this guy sitting on the street, and he's got like a, a kitty, Thing, like a thing to help him walk, you know? And, um, and uh, I'm just like walking by him and I'm just seeing this and I'm like, you know what, this isn't right for me to just walk by here and not, not, not pray for this guy, you know? And it's not just about healing, it's not, I can just see there's something wrong with him. And it would, it would not be Christ would walk by that, okay? And, and I was just like, and I told my friend, can we just go, can we go talk to that guy? And I was like, yeah, cool. And we, we went to him. And though we talked to him, and what ended up being is he's, he had a pain, he had hectic, he's old guys, like 60, he had pain in his back, pain in his leg, both his legs, hectic, he had surgery, um, but he's, he's in constant pain. And uh, he was actually also a passion. We prayed for his back once, all the pain leaves his back, one shot. And he, he freaks, he's like, it's amazing that he still has pain, really, pain is really in his legs, that's where the issue is. And uh, we pray for his legs, or actually his knees. We pray for his knee, nothing happens. And God bless you, stand up and walk away. But, and that's, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. But I want to tell you that it doesn't, prayer doesn't always happen the first time. 
So what happened is we were like, okay, well, sir, if you'd allow me, we'd like to pray for you again. He's like, sure, come on, we We prayed, we prayed, we prayed for about 15 to 20 minutes long for this guy's legs. And he had a pain level of 10 out of 10, like 10 the worst. And by the end of it, he had zero out of 10 pain. And all the pain left his legs. When we were saying goodbye, he said, you know what I was praying before I came to Passion Tonight? I prayed that God would send someone to take my pain. That's incredible. Now, now listen, if, if, if we walk by that guy, if, if I was disobedient to that voice in my head that says you need to stop for this guy, his prayer would have been left on answered. So I wanna, I'm telling you that because I don't want you to walk by people in your daily walk. I don't want you to walk by them and not be Jesus to them. Be afraid of them and then compensate just keep him in here for yourself. He didn't. Holy Spirit, okay, I want to I I I just explain to you how this works. When we accept Jesus as our Messiah, Holy Spirit comes and He makes His hope. Holy Spirit is God and all His might and all His glory and everything that is. It's not a piece of God. The Creator of the universe lives here inside of you. Okay, so Holy Spirit makes His hope inside of you when you become a believer. And what He longs to do is reach out to people around you and give them a piece of God's love. But the issue is He cannot touch anyone if we stand in His way. He cannot, we have a gift of free will. So that means that we need to step out of our comfort zone because Holy Spirit cannot operate generally in our comfort zones. He, he, we need to step out in faith and be like, listen, what's going on for your leg? I believe God's going to heal you right now. You know, or, or listen, why do you depress? Why do you have depression? Let's pray because we've got to crush that thing right now. Why do you have anxiety? Why are you struggling with this or that? Why are you struggling with pornography? Let's pray for that so God can crush that thing right now. See, so he longs for you to touch that. Now, you need to understand, he lives here. He lives here. And he likes to live there. And he loves you. That's why he lives there. Okay? And he so I wanna I wanna challenge you this week. You don't need to start like hectic stuff. But this week, when you encounter someone, and, and you can, you're gonna, every week, I, I encounter many people in my daily walk. Just not, not even just at, at studies, but in my daily walk, when I go to buy something, when I do this or that. When I, sometimes I drive, and there's someone walking on the side of the road, and God is just like, stop. And I stop right there, and I get on my car, and pray for that car. And the insane, most insane stuff has happened when I did that. Even if I'm unsure if I'm here, it's not about like it's not about like God with an audible voice coming. I don't do. I've heard that. Even some people have. I've never heard that. It's about I'm just like whoa. Well, I'm feeling like maybe I should just do this. And if I'm wrong, who cares? But you're gonna be right one time, and you're like, that's what God's voice sounds like. And the next time it's gonna be more and more and more. And in the end, you're gonna just hear His voice wherever you go, and you're gonna be. He's gonna start pointing out things to you. But see, it's not gonna happen on its own. It's going to happen when you pursue that thing. It's going to happen when you're like, Lord, I want you to use me. Because I can't do this. Because you cannot touch anyone. You cannot touch anyone without God's power, and without His presence, without Him using you. On your own strength, it is impossible to even love anyone. Okay. Cool. So, I want to I pray for you guys. to not bow to sin, but only bow to the King. 
Well, I pray that you would convict them to leave all of those worldly things and that they would no longer bow to culture but only bow to you. Lord, that they would not compensate for culture or what people think but only to you, Lord. And, and God, I just pray that you would show them above all who they are. Show them that they are, how valuable they are, and that they're royalty, they're kings and queens, Lord, and that you want to use them in that place. Lord, also pray, God, that you would reveal their callings for them. Lord, I pray that you would open, give them, visit them, Lord, in dreams and visions, God. And I pray that you would reveal to them in what area of life you'd like to use them. Lord, I pray that you would reveal those who need to start deciding what they're going to do next year or the year after. Lord, I pray that you would, that you would be intimately involved in that process and that they would see your face in every single decision of their life. That they would not exclude you, Lord. God, I pray, Lord, that you would, with the Holy Spirit, just come and fill everyone up with your love. Fill them, Lord. I pray that you would just baptize them in the, in the Holy Spirit, Lord. Yes, God. I just thank you so much for, for, for Jesus, for the cross. I thank you for, for your love for us. Repent us in the name of Jesus. Amen. of this godless culture. The same principle that was true in John's time is still true today. I want you to see it. The only thing, the only thing that can prepare a people for the ministry of extreme power is a ministry of extreme consecration.